The car scene nowadays seems to be a very hard space to navigate. I feel like everybody is sh on everybody for not doing things right or not building the right cars or not having the right parts. The one thing I have always loved about the Honda community is that they are like the only community I have ever been involved with. You could be dead broke building an absolute pile of sh with four wheels and someone will come up and tell you it's cool. They will show you respect and they will appreciate that you're putting effort into something that makes you happy. Because at the end of the day, people build cars for themselves. And all that being said, I wouldn't even consider myself a Honda guy. I owe a lot to Hondas. We have done a lot of Honda builds over the years, but I wouldn't say I'm a Honda guy. I don't love Hondas. I don't seek them out. And while there is still a few that I would like to own one day, like a CRX, I want to build a true EK9. I would even love to build an S2000. There is one that I never in a million years of my entire existence, of the time I get to spend on Earth, of the entire time frame from when the Earth spawned to when it will no longer be here, from the Dawn of the f***ing dinosaurs, 5,000 years before the Big Bang, from that time, I never in my life thought I would have this car near me. This car is not mine, and this car is not done. And to be honest with you, I haven't even touched it yet. And I already absolutely love this thing because I saw firsthand the smile on Mac's face when we were driving it home. And so whether you guys are part of the Honda community or not, I challenge you guys to have an open mind and start judging people's cars by how happy it makes the person who's driving it and not by if it's your favorite car, or if you like the way it looks, or if the wheels are good enough, or if it makes enough blow-off sounds, or if it has the right amount of HPs. If you have to judge a car, judge it by how happy it makes the owner. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you guys to the Dell Spool. This car is really cool to me because this represents what Honda is to me. This is a prime example of working with what you have, with what you can afford, literally making the best out of whatever situation you're in. So this is Mac's car. So Mac has been on the channel quite a bit lately. You guys have been loving him and I've tried to kick him out and he won't leave. So since he's gonna be sticking around, I figured we would introduce his car because there is some stuff that we still wanna do on it. Like we were saying earlier, this is not your dream car either. No, absolutely wasn't my dream car. Uh, I still would say it's not my dream car. My attainable dream car is really an SI, EG, hatch, or coupe. I had an EG coupe, that was my first car. I still to this day love it. This is kind of the same chassis, but it's not the same to me. I do love this, don't get me wrong. Before the world fell apart, I ended up finding this car. The lady kind of had some health problems and it was in a, she was in a bad situation, it wasn't fair. So she just wanted the car to go to somebody that would love it. <laughs> When I got it, it was automatic, under 100,000 kilometers, and it was stock. Like, so stock, the only thing it was missing was the floor mats and the radio. <laughs> but <laughs> when a car is missing floor mats, and that's the problem? That's it, man. That, that's what makes a stock yeah. car a stock car. Yeah. That's crazy. So we're gonna get into this car in a second. We'll show you all the work that Mac has done to it and all the work that we still need to do to it. This thing reminds me so much of the EG, and like, it really just makes me excited. So I'm super stoked. I actually, though, have never been in it. Mac has actually been sending me videos and photos of this car for years as he's been building it, but I've never actually been inside of it or seen it in real life until yesterday when we picked it up. That's true, which is really cool. And just to touch on that really quickly, I know a lot of you guys keep commenting and asking like, who really is Mac and how do you know him? Me and Mac have known each other for like seven years. Yeah, about that. Since before I did any YouTube, since before anything, I was like 18, I was like the lot boy at the dealership and Mac was selling cars and that's where we met. And then we always just stayed in touch when I lived in BC, he would send me photos of things he was doing and watch the videos. And then he legitimately did quit his job to yep. start a welding business when I was telling you guys in the first couple videos that you were in, I think yeah, I said that. Yeah. And then it turned into, I couldn't get rid of him because he was having so much fun helping me build cars and I uh, decided to keep him around a bit. That's how me and Mac know each other. Sure. You will notice that uh, the inside of this car has no interior. So that's something we're working on. Also, one of the coolest features by far with this thing is that yes, it is a chick car, but it thinks it's a truck, dude, look at this. Hell yeah, the back window goes down, dude. That is the most gangster thing I've ever seen. It's not a chick car. It's the Honda Miata. A Miata's a chick car. No way, it's a drift car. <laughs> Debatable. I love them, but they're chick cars. I don't know. I don't think this one is with all the power. It's a chick car. Dude, that thing actually grips 
hooks up. Ah, it's Damn. Also, it hooks like a s Yeah, all, I've always had problems getting my front wheel drive power down. That hooks. Yeah. You see what I mean about the suspension? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. yeah. They've yeah. probably seen it. At one point, I grabbed the door. I'm like, whoa, because we were just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. But, so, that's, damn, dude. Yeah, that's something I want to address, but in due time, right? Nothing happens overnight. Oh, my goodness. Oh! <laughs> that didn't feel good at all. to see here just a couple dudes in a sweet convertible what's up bro <laughs> so this this tiny little chicken nugget of a car makes 315 horsepower and how many torques? Uh, 250 250 foot pounds of torque which is pretty good for like a tiny nugget and I think we're running the same size tires like you have 205 5015s and I have 205 5015s, but I make 450 something in the EK. Yeah. So I really think that that's why this to me feels like it doesn't feel as fast instantly, but it is so smooth. Like you just hook and go. Yeah. Whereas in the EK, it's like you spin the top of every gear. Oh, yeah. Whereas you just hook and go and go and go. And it's just like, whoa, dude. Yeah. So good job on building a car that actually moves. Thanks, dude. So like I said, this is still very much a project. It needs an interior. He's got a dash and stuff he wants to do. But he mainly focused on engine based stuff first yeah because you only got on the road last year yeah so my focus was always engine suspension and that's all i really cared about i wanted it to track good and i wanted it to move good so this is a b18b a true japanese motor out of a non vtec integra b18b a long gear transmission essentially just a stock motor with an oem head gasket and arp head studs full bolt-ons essentially with a little baby turbo this is an rhb Triple ball bearing turbo. If I remember correctly, it's a 5260. Okay. Japanese Del Sol headlights. Uh, a USDM one has like a two piece. Like an EG Civic? Like an so EG. Flops around yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got like a weird profile in the signal. And I personally just don't like it. Uh, I think these look cool. Thanks. I like this. And it does, this is the 97. Correct, bumper. 97 bumper. So 96, 97 called the Dolphin Nose. Looks completely different. Such a check car name <laughs> thing, dude. Come on. $150 for the transmission, $300 for the motor. I think I paid $200 or $150 for the intake manifold. Like, dude, this is the kind of shit that I used to preach to you guys. To just, that's why I loved the EG and building Hondas. So it just, again, it makes me super stoked. That's why I'm really happy to have this thing on the channel, even though it's a super chick car. It's fine because you're the least chick car driver I've ever met. So Max showed up with a literal bucket of parts for this thing. Like, like, a legit bucket full of stuff. That's not even like a third of the parts I have for it to go on. And he has some pretty cool stuff. So today he's got to do like an oil change. He's got to do, it just came out of storage yesterday. We just picked it up. So like he's got to do some upkeep oil change. You guys can see it right here before it goes up. That drain line right there is kinked. So that's why it smokes a lot on D cell. I don't know if you guys saw any of that in the rollers. And like I said, today's mainly about maintenance, getting this thing back on the road so that he can cruise with it and drive it. It's the first year he's had this thing on the road, uh, but he does have a lot of cool stuff that I really think you guys will like and relate to in terms of videos. He has these bumper bracket things. Now these are from Australia. These are from a company called Mac Lifter Kit. Mac Lifter Kit. All Hondas have saggy bumper problems. I just spent two hours the other day trying to bolt this up in a way where it doesn't sag and it still has like a little bit of a weird gap kind of towards the front, not the rear. This side, I actually got dialed in a little bit better. The Max car isn't bad, but it has this gap. And like, if you guys know anything, you know that like these little pins kind of pull down. And so while it may not look like a big gap, it it shouldn't be that big. Doing even worse on this side, actually, you can see it pulling out right there. I've always had this problem. I never knew what I was supposed to do about it. And apparently Mac has the solution. This is something I think is really cool. Mac's gonna fire up an oil change. I'm gonna try and fire up a Mac lifter kit for Mac.
This is actually a really cool example of why even just a little kink in a line like that that you might look at and be like, you know what? That's not bad. It's bad, dude. Look at that. On the inside, that is a huge. It is impeding on the oil drain a lot. It doesn't look like much from here. It just looks like a little kink, but like it, it's doing a pretty good job of freaking up the flow. Yeah, and I also, I was like, oh, it can't be that bad. It's small. And then when I pulled this out, I was like, holy. Yeah, it's like almost takes up like half 40%. Yeah. Of the so Mac brought over some new line this morning. He just cut this piece up. It's nice and fresh. He's just gonna go ahead and put that back on the drain. And I got these things bolted up, which are actually really cool. So you can see they sit nice and flush with the bumper. Basically the rears, these are for the rear. So the front of this car doesn't have anywhere for something like this to bolt to. For example, it would bolt here and just give the bumper extra, extra support. But this car doesn't have anywhere up here for this to go. So this car only gets these in the rear, which we aren't doing today because there's a few things that Mac wants to do before we go ahead and bolt those onto the rear. So we're just doing the fronts and the fronts add a second hole up here. So basically the, the weight is more evenly distributed across this whole thing. Uh, and it's more distributed again because it's got two holes instead of one which will help the thing that I was saying, where basically the whole bumper weight is on this one little hole. And that's why this all bends down. So now it's gonna be shared between these two holes and it's actually not gonna be pulling just on those spots, but it'll be evenly pulling. So this is a really, really cool piece. Go ahead and get these end lines built up and then we can get everything reassembled and see if we have solved the issue of the smoky Dell girly. Easy. Dell feminine. Dell spool. Dell. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That line already looks so much better, dude. Perfectly bulged right there. Went right around your manifold. It all looks very nice. Dude, that looks good. We didn't even spend time dialing this in and it looks really, really good. I honestly, it's these little white clips are the real problem. It's super solid on there now. That doesn't wiggle or anything. That's a cool find, dude. I hey, like hey. it. What do you got going on over here? New air filter? New air filter. Uh, this one was not the right size. So, oops. Oh, and that one's not new anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. She's in. Quick little engine prime action because we had the entire turbo apart. All right, plug me in. <laughs> the squeal is because we need to change the alternator pulley. Oh, hey, dude. it's back in business. It wasn't working yesterday, so we messed with the wires. It's back to life. Yeah, pull it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get to drive the chick car. It's a chick car. It's a chick car. We're driving it, we're loving it, but it's a chick car. Say it. No. <laughs> What a sh <laughs> My wife used to have one of them back in the day. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> it was the sauce pups. Up the hill? Yeah, whatever. Oh, your engine light just came on. Yeah, it's for probably for the uh, O2 sensor. It's okay? Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> it floats like... It's get, the float's kind of scary in the passenger seat, A eh? little bit. Yeah, I never really noticed that in the driver's seat. I don't even know what I was looking at. I, that, I was so nervous for some reason. I think because it's not my car. I will tell you, this is the first chick car I've ever had that can do one of these. I missed third, so I just didn't. That's right. Your shifter is like really long throws. I know, that's why I want to get rid of it. Yeah, because I just went to hit third and I just went into outer space. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> there's nothing here. So. You've never, no one's ever driven your car. Have you, you've never seen anybody drive it though? I've never seen anybody. Do you anybody. want to? I feel like sure. that's such a good feeling. Sure. All right. I, I, Cause I feel like it's so loud in the car, but yesterday you were like, no, your car's quiet. Yeah, no, in here it's super loud. When you're, when you're in boost, I'll drive by you twice. When you're in boost, it is obviously very loud cause you have a screamer pipe. Yeah. But when you're not in boost, so I'm super excited. I've never ever heard this car being driven unless it was me driving it. I can't wait.
That sounds so cool. It's so quiet. That's hands down quieter than a naturally aspirated B series. That is bananas. <laughs> I'm like a little schoolgirl. It's not a chase car, just because I said I'm like a little schoolgirl. Oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> Dude, you're right, it's so quiet. Yeah. And then you hop on it, and the only thing you hear is just turbo and tire squeals. Yeah, it just goes from like to ah! <laughs> I never saw one smoke. There's a tiny bit when I stop fully. This video is the first time I've ever been in this car, but I also got to drive it. So uh, yeah, thank you, that was Thanks, fun. Man. I hope you guys are stoked and I hope you guys are interested in this thing because there's actually some stuff that I really wish I did on my EG and stuff that we never did that we can do to this thing. So today's little challenge for you guys, I already mentioned it in the beginning, is to just try to be more open-minded. Stop judging everybody based on what you think is right because you just have an opinion. There's no such thing as right and wrong. It's literally just your opinion versus someone else's. If someone likes pink, Lambo doors on their Miata, let them do it. You know what I mean? Like just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means you don't like it. That was my challenge. Take that and do what you will with it. We are going to take this and do what we will with this. So that's all I got for you guys. I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out and stay committed. Welcome to Robbie Ross's YouTube channel. Today, we will be taking a deep dive into the Honda community and what makes them so beautiful in ASMR. If my mom ever saw me in a car like this, she'd probably slap me.